Hey folks, this is Riker, and we just got the reveal of the Lunar New Year event for Diablo 4 called Lunar Awakening. This will be Diablo 4's second holiday event after the Midwinter Blight event in December. When we recently found out that it wouldn't be long before the next holiday event, we did guess Lunar New Year, and seems this is what we're getting. The event itself will begin February 6th, starting at 10 p.m. PST, and it's going to run until February 20th, until 10 a.m. PST. The event will be available in both seasonal and for eternal characters, and a major theme of the event will be shrines. So while playing, you're going to have to activate lunar shrines, which you can find pretty much everywhere. And while active, you're going to earn 50% bonus XP, multiplicative, they specify now all the time so that we don't yell at them. And you get 30% movement speed. That's actually the part that I'm more excited about. Plus, quote, a plethora of buffs, all while earning Ancestor's Favor reputation. So just like for Midwinter event, it was Kyovisha that was our hub. It seems like for this event, it's going to be Ked Bardu. In the north part of the town, we're going to meet a new NPC vendor running the night market. This is going to be our hub for the event. And this is where we'll exchange our ancestors' favor. This is the currency. Again, it seems like it's going to be similar to Midwinter Blight, where you earn a currency while playing, and you can trade that in for cosmetics. So now it's called Ancestors' Favor. And we can get our extravagant Lunar Renewal-themed rewards. So we find the Lunar Shrines, both in Dungeons and the Overworld, while they're active on us. If we slay monsters, we're going to earn a bunch of Ancestors' favor. Lunar Shrines will have a little dragon on them, and they'll also have a unique icon on the map, so they'll be easy to identify from a distance. Also, Nightmare Dungeon Sigils have a chance to have an Ancestors' favor dungeon affix. So, we're getting a new dungeon affix. This isn't something that we had with the Midwinter Blight event. This is going to guarantee only Lunar Shrines spawn for that dungeon. Then, in addition to the extra shrines, you also receive... 10% now it said extra shrines only lunar shrine so this also suggests there's going to be more shrines it's not just they're replacing whatever shrines spawn with lunar shrines but we're also getting extra shrines okay you also receive 10% bonus glyph xp once the dungeon is complete that's nice 10% is a little on the low side 20% I think would get people excited all nightmare dungeon sigils with the ancestors favor affix will retain it once the event has ended so you're able to craft up a bunch of these sigils, and even when the event is over, you can keep running these uh, Ancestor's Favor Enchanted Nightmare Dungeons. So preliminary thoughts on this as of this point. Vaults in Season 3. After the Friday patch, vaults are actually in a pretty good place now. So I already preferred running vaults to Nightmare Dungeons, but they made some improvements to vaults now, making uh, traps less punishing and making it easier to actually get the rewards at the end. And by easier i mean you're pretty much guaranteed to get it all the all the time now as long as you put in the smallest amount of effort so now i never wanted to run nightmare dungeons anymore i just wanted to run vaults now this is going to potentially be a reason to run nightmare dungeons i don't know if 10 percent bonus xp is enough to get me to run a nightmare dungeon it's going to come down i guess to how easy it is to get a nightmare dungeon with the ancestors favor affix on it and how many lunar shrines we really get in there and therefore how much of that ancestors favor we can reasonably farm within a nightmare dungeon if it turns out that it's faster to just farm shrines in the overworld then i don't know if this is an incentivize me to do nightmare dungeons but by the same token the overworld stuff you're not going to be getting any glyph xp so this could be a way to combine leveling up your character normally, empowering your glyphs, while also getting Ancestor's Favor. We'll have to see how it plays out exactly. Still though, 10%. Now, back to the shrines. Not all shrines, but some shrines have been replaced with Lunar Shrines. Alright, Lunar Shrines provide an exciting bonus effect on top of their regular shrine power. So this is not a replacement, this is in addition to. So, Artillery Shrine chance to summon a holy bomb like the holy hand grenade blast wave shrine each explosion summons a cluster bombardment awesome channeling shrine increase attack speed and chance to reset cooldowns that is huge so channeling shrine normally gives you i think 60 percent cooldown reduction which is already big now every hit has a chance to reset cooldowns entirely wow and then uh, base channeling shrine also gives your attacks 
uh, 100% resource cost reduction. So nothing costs any resource. Now we're getting increased attack speed as well. So we can be spamming our most damaging attack with <laughs> zero resource and faster. And it's resetting our cooldowns. Amazing. Conduit Shrine. Summon frequent, powerful, shocking strikes. This might actually... Okay, so Conduit Shrines have a problem in the meta right now in that if you're running an S tier build, if you click a Conduit Shrine, in general, you're doing less damage than your regular build. At launch, Conduit Shrines were great until people broke the game. So now, again, for the most powerful builds, Conduit Shrines are... Uh, they're a nerf to your power, effectively. So now it sounds like... Again, we're getting a base transformational effect, but we're also getting frequent, powerful, shocking strikes. It sounds like they're just ramping up the damage even more. Greed Shrine. Chance to summon a Treasure Goblin. While the Shrine is active, 25 kills summons a Treasure Goblin and 50 a second. Okay, so they do cap it. Um, I can't wait for them to add the Vault to Diablo 4. In Diablo 3, when you kill a Goblin, there is a chance that a portal spawns to a realm called the Vault. Uh, it's Treasure Goblin Land. So it's this smallish map where you run into a lot of loot and you fight the boss of the treasure goblins. And, well, actually it's similar to the world boss, Greed, um, or Avarice. But it's also filled with treasure goblins. Lethal Shrine. Chance to instantly execute a struck monster, causing fear on surrounding monsters. Okay, fear effects are terrible. Having monsters run away from you is generally not desired, but uh, the instant execute is huge. And this includes elites. Chance to instantly execute not, not a monster low on life, any struck monster. What that chance is, is going to determine how broken this shrine is. Excludes bosses and other players. That is very fair. Anytime you add an effect to the game that instantly executes monsters, yikes. So many of Diablo 3's crazy, overpowered, we need an emergency patch to fix things, revolved around instantly executing monsters. So we'll see what happens here. Protection Shrine. You reflect all incoming damage. Damage reflected scales with level and world tier. Cool. All right. So this, I mean, what we're kind of seeing here is going from Diablo 3 Shrines to Diablo 3 Pylons. These are significant buffs to the Shrines. I am definitely much more excited to click each of these Shrines now. Now, on top of this, Miserly Spirits spawn immediately when a Lunar Shrine is activated, allowing you to immediately capitalize on the Shrine's specific gameplay augmentation. Did we just get free Nemesis Bracers from Diablo 3? In Diablo 3, Nemesis Bracers is an item that you can equip that when you click on a pylon or a shrine, it spawns an enemy champion pack. This, is, While it sounds bad at first, is actually great because you want to be killing monsters. You want to be killing monsters faster. If the monsters are delivered straight to you, that's wonderful. That's XP and loot delivered right to your doorstep. And when you click a shrine, you just got a nice buff. So now you get to instantly use the buff. The worst feeling is when you click a shrine and then you're walking, 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 and there's no enemies anywhere. And you just feel those seconds ticking down. Additionally, Lunar Awakening themed Whisper Bounties are available throughout the event, making them an excellent place to earn Ancestor's favor. Okay, so all together, I mean, now we have Nightmare Dungeons, now we have bounties happening. So it sounds like they're addressing feedback from the Midwinter event, which was basically... We were just roaming around the open world, doing those outer world events over and over. Now we could be doing whispers, which are inherently rewarding. Now we're additionally going to be getting uh, the event currency while doing it. Again, there's... It comes down to how rewarding those nightmare sigils end up being and how easy or difficult it is to craft them. If it's at the mercy of RNG and they don't have a high spawn rate... Uh, but even then, just the bounties by themselves. Again, we need to be doing bounties for other purposes, so... A bounty is going to send us somewhere in the outer world. We're going to be, hopefully, finding uh, a shrine along the way as well. So it's a nice way of combining these elements together. Synergy and gameplay without us having to really go out of our way to farm one thing. Which was the big criticism of Midwinter Blight. Technically, yes, with Midwinter Blight, you got to a point where you could just run Nightmare Dungeons to farm the currency. But it just seemed vastly more efficient to not do that and just waste your time, if you want to put it that way. Getting no other reward but the event currency. This seems like, again, a better synergy of getting us to do activities that are inherently rewarding while also getting the Lunar Awakening currency. There's going to be 10 Ancestors' Favor Reputation levels in total to earn, 6 different Lunar-themed cosmetic rewards to unlock. 
Uh, they'll also be selling cosmetics in the shop. So these are the ones that we can earn for free or by investing our time. And these are the ones that we must spend platinum on. So overall, this uh, seems like lessons were learned from Midwinter Blight. This seems like an improvement on Midwinter Blight. Again, is this some kind of like crazy new gameplay mode and whatever? No, it's not trying to be. It's just a little holiday event. It's some cosmetics, right? The, think of the purpose of a holiday event of here are cosmetics that you can earn through gameplay. Now let's build up some gameplay around a means of acquiring them. That's that's the thought behind how these events are put together, at least from my perspective. Late Friday night, we got a, an emergency patch for Diablo 4 Season 3 that addressed a lot of the criticism. And since then, the narrative on D4 Season 3 has, has almost changed completely. Again, prior to that, we discussed in this video here how badly the reception... Uh, was of the season, at least on, on social media platforms. Of course, it's always the the most vocal people that are going to be posting negative thoughts, but the, the sentiment was so overwhelmingly negative, I wasn't really seeing any positive sentiment, apart from, like, if you go out and ask people, like I know in YouTube comments, for instance, a lot of you folks have said that you're enjoying the season, but all the most, like, upvoted thoughts and biggest voices talking about the season was all quite negative, but Following the patch, again, that has almost completely done a 180. And a huge part of it is actually that now the vaults, with uh, the, the main issue of the vaults being the traps slowing down the gameplay, now the traps don't really slow down the gameplay anymore after the changes that they have made. It used to be that it was so frustrating to get through a vault while avoiding getting hit because you have to slow down. There was just so much density of traps maintaining your stacks in order to get your loot at the end. Just felt like you had to invest so many stacks because you're gonna lose so many unless you really slow down and that's not fun to really slow down to the point that the way I would play vaults was I would just say, screw the loot, I'm just gonna run through and get hit by all the traps. And now the way they've buffed things, it's fairly easy to maintain enough loot stacks to the point that it's actually easy through just regular play to earn more of the pearls at the end of a run then you consume at the start to maintain sufficient loot stacks in other words you spend maybe three four pearls you don't worry about the traps and throughout your run you have made back at least three or four pearls such that you can continue this gameplay of just spending your pearls ignoring the traps getting hit by them and then you make back enough pearls to continue this process so one way of Putting this is that they've buffed things to effectively make the traps meaningless. And I did... Intellectually, I understand that to be the case. But what I found in practice is... I'm still avoiding the traps. Even though I understand logically... I could just ignore them, get hit by them, and I will always have enough stacks at the end to open up all my loot boxes. But... I still put in a modicum of effort to avoid the traps when I can. It doesn't slow down my gameplay tremendously because I'm not paranoid about it anymore. And I think that's what it is. I know that I have enough stacks that even if I get hit now and then, you know, maybe I lose three buff stacks by the end. But at the back of my mind, I'm not panicking. I'm not stressing over it. And I'm actually modifying my gameplay a little to be avoiding and dodging traps. Even though, like, the logical part of my mind is saying, stop, stop it. Like, just get hit by the traps. Don't worry about it. But I am reacting to what's in the dungeon. My monkey brain can't stop me from actually trying or putting in a bit of an effort to dodge those traps. So I guess this comes down to how most people play. But I think if most people play like me, then it's actually now successfully implemented the traps, which I didn't expect to be possible. But let's end by turning the question to you folks. What do you think of all this? What do you think of the lunar event? What do you think of the changes to season three? Sound off in the comments, because that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.